Hello and welcome to Studio 21. I'm your host, Daniela John. And wow, it's been so long, literally months since we last talked. So let's catch up a little bit. This is our first episode of this season. There was a historical winter storm in Texas a few weeks ago, and we don't have a spring break this season. So it sort of felt like a spring break, except it was like 20 degrees outside. So that was less than ideal. What else? Um, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry got interviewed by Oprah. That was intense. That was amazing. You know when people are like, I was born in the wrong generation. I wasn't. I'm a part of the generation where there's a robot on Mars that's tweeting at me and Oprah and Tyler Perry are deconstructing the monarchy. How could it get better than that? I really don't know. Um, on a sad note, it is the year anniversary of COVID-19. That's a huge bummer. That's all my only note on that. Like, don't be dumb. Um, what else? I've developed a TikTok addiction. It's not cute, but it gets me through the day. And that's pretty much all that's new with me. So let's see if there's anything new happening in San Antonio. First of all, and don't quote me on this, I think tomorrow, Wednesday, March 17th is St. Patrick's Day. Now I've never gotten to experience a true St. Patty's Day because when I came of age, so did a pandemic. And we're still there, so I am not going to be partaking this year, but if you want to, I guess that's your business. Uh, the San Antonio Riverwalk will be dying the river green from 1 to 3 p.m. I believe that they are canceling the floats, but are still holding an artisan show in the Hilton Hotel. But pretty much any establishment that you look up online at downtown will probably have some sort of St. Patty's thing going on. So I'll leave that to you to go figure you're out. On Friday, March 18th, the San Antonio Art Museum is hosting an online art to lunch, Powerful Women. The event will be held over Zoom from 12.30 to 1.30. The tickets can be purchased on their website, but the event is free to members. I'm not really sure what happens at these events, but I am going to take a guess. So please do not come for me if what I describe is not what happens on one of those Zoom calls. I really don't know. I'm just guessing here. So my guess is that you roll up on your Zoom meeting, you take your little artsy lunch that you have, and then, you know, it's like a POV of people taking the camera and showing you art pictures of like really powerful women, I guess. And then in the chat, you put like inspirational quotes, like you go girl, pop off queen to like these art pieces that are very ancient. So we're just cheering on ancient women. And I think that that is really great. And if that's something that you are interested, then go on their website, San Antonio Museum of Art, and purchase a ticket, $10. Do it or don't. On Saturday, March 20th, the Phil Herberger Park Conservancy is hosting a virtual nature talk on Facebook Live. The Conservancy is a 330-acre park with trails, learning landscapes, play areas, and dog parks in the heart of San Antonio. This event will be about how to plan a native habitat with instruction of how to propagate plants, meaning taking a little bit of one plant and turning it into its own little plant itself. It's pretty cool. Um, it's very important to plant native vegetation in your garden as it helps to support the natural ecosystem around you. So if you have an opportunity to check out their Facebook Live at 9 a.m and learn a bit more about the nature around you. Thought I heard something. This last one is more for me and less for you. Plus, it can happen at any day, at any moment. It's not even a real event because I'm making it up right now. So buckle up. Have you heard of the Almost Park Basin? It's this little flat area of land. It's a park. It has a bunch of stuff going on. And it's a designated floodplain, so everything washes down into there, which means it piles up a lot of trash. And it's like a really pretty place, but it has a lot of trash. So. Get yourself a little group of friends together, get an H-E-B bag or whatever your desired grocery bag is and like just pick up some trash, make it a competition. I don't know, whoever picks up the most amount of trash gets to buy the drinks. I don't know, the least amount of trash gets to buy the drinks at the Sonic happy hour or something. I don't know, make it fun, do it for me, do it for the animals. The birds will be so happy. They told me, go clean up some trash, it's wonderful. 
this is literally all I have for this week, so stay tuned for a great show. If you think that there's a topic or event that I should talk about it, hit us up on social media, flood our DMs, do it, talk to us. Stay tuned for release day, gossip guru, and our musical performer, Baldemar. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Serrano. And I'm Joey Francis. And we would love to welcome you back to Gossip Guru. So our first big story of this week is the Oprah Winfrey interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. So after weeks of anticipation, the tell-all interview finally aired last Sunday night, so yesterday. Mm -hmm. And the interview really revolved around the couple who removed themselves from the royal family mm -hmm. and they are no longer connected to their royal titles or the royal patronage and they no longer have to do any of the royal duties. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> some would say. Give and take. <laughs> exactly. So there is a lot of speculation as to why they left the royal family and this interview set um, was used to clear up any of those rumors and to really show how the couple felt about the whole process and their true intentions behind the whole process. Hmm. Yeah, so the biggest takeaway from the interview, I would say, is that the couple left because of the really horrible treatment that Meghan Markle was getting from the UK press. They really went after her race and they went after her class. It was really gross stuff. All the tabloids were really nasty, and it really caused Meghan Markle to suffer in her mental health, which is really horrible. Yeah, that's not a good look. No, exactly. It was do. just really sad. But there was also some internal issues with the family as well. One of them being is when Meghan Markle was pregnant with their son Archie, who is super adorable, <laughs> the royal family um, went back on their usual protocol and said that they would not give Archie a royal title. Yeah. I know. That's, that was really shocking. That was shocking. Exactly. And with this, he would not get any security, which is was a really big shock to Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. They just really wanted to make sure that their son mm -hmm. was supported and that he was safe, especially with the tabloids in the UK, which are really yeah. ruthless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but overall, I felt like the interview showed that the couple was doing pretty well and that they're expecting a new child, a girl, which is really yeah. exciting. Yeah, so I'm happy for them. And don't be too worried. They have a Netflix deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they will be producing it. a lot of kids' media, and they will also just be producing um, movies and TV shows in general. Yeah, and nice. I just think um, Princess Diana would be really proud of Prince Harry for protecting his family, and I stand Princess Diana, so. No, as you should. Do you think the baby girl, do you think <gasps> Diana that would, is going to be in there somewhere? That would be everything. First name, middle name, I don't know. That would be everything. Meghan Markle is actually wearing... Princess Diana's bracelet during the interview oh. as like an homage, Aww. which is really sweet. Beautiful. Yeah. Damn Princess Di. <laughs> Me too. I am a little obsessed with her. I love her. All right. Well, for our second story of the day, everyone's favorite TV show about chess is being turned <laughs> into a musical. So a production company just bought the rights to the 1983 Walter Tevis novel, The Queen's Gambit. Oh. which is the basis for the Netflix series of the same name. Mm -hmm. I watched it. Oh, love. It was good. Oh, mm -hmm. love it. I, well, it just won two Golden Globes, one for Best Actress and one for Best Miniseries, so it's no wonder that it's been snatched up. Um, <laughs> it's in, it was bought like a day or two ago, so it's like very, very early uh, stages of the produ production, but mm -hmm. they're going to turn it into a musical. Um, and Love of Ford is the production. They've done projects like Jagged Little Pill, the musical, which was made up almost entirely of Alanis Morissette songs. Ooh. It was a big hit. Um, and some might say that, oh, a musical about chess isn't going to work. And people said that about the TV show, too. But actually, the 1980s musical Chess is a cult classic. Never heard of it, but I'll no. take your word for it. I looked it up. It's a cult <laughs> classic. And the songs were written by members of the band ABBA. We love. I love ABBA. I know. So I don't know. It's worked once before. So I think that the Queen's Gambit musical is going to be a huge success. Well, that's great. No, I'm excited now. I am, Something to look forward to. I am too. I'll watch the musical. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I will. And I think that's all the gossip we have for today. I would have to agree with so you. That's it. Stick around and you can see the musical interview. Bye, everyone. All right. How's it going? Hello. Pleasure to meet you. So, how did you get started in music, Valdemir? Around high school, that's when I at least when I started recording. I had a, uh, I had already learned how to play guitar and drums in middle school, and then I got like an iPod and I started making uh, music on GarageBand. My senior years when I first released like a, a single, and then I started playing like in, in local bands in San Antonio. Eventually, leading up to me having like my own band. 
at it since roughly 2015 as as Baldemar. Nice. Um, so what was your inspiration or theme for your most recent album? For the Gunk Pop EP, it was um, mostly kind of just me trying to, in a way, give like a like a taste tester of like what you can expect from like a, a full album release. I've been uh, wanting to release a full album that I already have the name for called Self Loading. And most of the music is, uh, I guess, just really like a uh, personal stuff. I, I like to critique myself through my own lyrics. But at the same time, though, I do like write about like, you know, like literal events. What was your favorite song or songs in your most recent album? My favorite one would have to be Anything But Yourself because I like that I really uh, honed in on like the, I guess, like a droney kind of sound. Um, I'm a real big fan of psychedelic music and... It's definitely one for people that like trippy songs. Alrighty. What is the songwriting process like for you? Usually, um, I just um, noodle around with uh, with my guitar until like I come up with something cool, or I'll noodle around with like a, a beat sequencer. I'll, I'll lay down like a like some electronic drums or like a synth, and then if I hear like a lyric in my head or a line or a theme that seems like it could fit, that's usually what goes next, like lyrics, and then. I garnish it. I garnish the rest with like the other instruments that are missing up, up until that point. How have you adjusted with the COVID restrictions and has it affected your music producing process? It's definitely affected performing like before people. When we were first in 2020, like around April, the springtime, I was doing like solo sets and I did like a couple of those and then I was just like, eh, I don't know if this is really like, you know, for me, it's not, it's not the same, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so then I realized we needed to shift gears and maybe just try to make, you know, focus on uh, just like recording music itself, making sure it's nice and good, you know, really like taking the time with like a lot of the songs that I've already, I will admit, I tend to take my time with my music too much time sometimes. But yeah, this has definitely been a, a nice breather. It's definitely made us like focus more on just what we can do as far as like creating stuff that people can ac access digitally. To keep up with uh, my music and uh, stuff that me and my band might be doing, you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Valdemar underscore. That is underscore bald, E-M-A-R underscore. And that's mostly where I, I update stuff. I have a YouTube, I'm on Spotify, pretty much wherever you listen to music, I'm you're, you're bound to find um, my, my music there. Thank you, Baltimore Esquivel. This is Alexi Martoff, and this has been the Studio 21 Musical Interview. Hi, I'm Rumi Ziga. And I'm Madison Poljan. Welcome to the first release date of 2021. Our movie this week is Raya and the Last Dragon. It follows Raya and her pet pill bug Tuk Tuk as she uses her training to restore peace to her land and finding by finding the last dragon. But will she be successful? Will the dragon even be helpful to her? Watch to find out. Raya and the Last Dragon has a G rating and a 114 minute runtime. So I know that I talked about Raya the Last Dragon a bit last semester, but a new trailer was recently released and it must be discussed. This movie is something I'm really excited for. In an age of Disney remakes and sequels, it's really cool to see Disney putting out something original again. And the new trailer does not disappoint. We get to see more of the world, which is so cool and beautifully animated. More of the characters who seem fun, funny, and with a wide range of personalities more of the comedy, and more of the action, which, not going to lie, seems pretty epic. Uh, you're right, this movie looks really, really good, and it's finally nice to see Disney coming out with something that's original, um, that's not just a remake or a sequel, and especially that this movie is set in a place that seems to have a lot of history that we don't know yet, and a lot of culture that we get to explore like, as we watch the movie, and they can expand upon later. Um, however, I am a little disappointed and the similar animation of the people, but um, like the people look a lot like the people from Tangled and Frozen and Moana. And it would just be nice to see a different style of animation from Disney maybe. But I know regardless, the graphics do look amazing. The water that was in the trailer looked really realistic for animation. Um, and I know I'll enjoy it regardless. Yes, Raya and the Last Dragon was released on Disney Plus Premier Access for $29.99 on March 5th but it will run for free on Disney Plus. 
starting on June 4th. Our video game this week is Space-Based Startopia. In the game, you take the role of a commander of Space-Based Startopia. A combination of economic simulations and empire building, the game really puts your management and leadership skills to the test. Your base has three decks, a sub deck for vital survival functions, a fun deck for visitors and entertainment, and my personal favorite as a bio major, a bio deck for creating and destroying life. The game also has a really funny AI bot that seems to be constantly at her wit's end. Yeah, the initial release trailer was a bit rough. The graphics were pretty underwhelming, even if it wasn't like an actual gameplay trailer. And it gave me the same vibe as an old Naughty Dog like game trailers, but without the humor. The gameplay does look very fun though, and it looks like there are a lot of co customization choices. And I like the narrator's voice, the robot narrator. She seems, she seems to have a lot of personality in such a tiny little body. And I hope throughout the entire game, she continues that and she like plays, she just plays a bigger part. And, but like I said earlier, the only really disappointing thing is the graphics. It looks like a game that was released in the early 2000s for the original Xbox, which is a little tough. Yeah, yeah, not gonna lie. The initial release trailer also had me cringing a bit. The graphics seemed a bit like a um, Wally knockoff. I couldn't really get a sense of the story and some of the humor was kind of... Uh... After seeing the gameplay trailer though, I was like, okay, here we go. Because honestly, the Space Empire building looks really fun and I'm very intrigued by that bio room. The game honestly reminds me of Tiny Tower, the mobile app that defined my middle school days. Except that Space Space Startopia is on my favorite consoles. It has better graphics, if only slightly, and it's set in space. I can roll with that. I can roll with that. Space Space Star Toby will be available on the Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Nintendo Switch on March 26th, 2021. That's all for today. I'm Remy Zika. And I'm Madison Poljan. Thank you for tuning in to Release Date. She won't even look at me. I got books. I got flashlights.